Welcome to our quick introduction to the classic film Quo Vadis. Have you ever been curious about the interesting history behind this timeless movie? Well, get ready because we've got lots of funny, shocking, and sad facts to share as we explore the world of ancient Rome. The movie, released in 1951, tells the story of a Roman general and a Christian woman during Emperor Nero's time. It features impressive sets, stunning costumes, and great performances from its actors. Have you seen this movie before? If not, you're in for a treat. And even if you have, there are always new details to discover. As we dive into the behind-the-scenes stories and lesser-known facts about the movie, you'll be amazed by the dedication of the cast and crew, surprised by the challenges they faced, and touched by how it has affected audiences over the years. Now, before we go on, we want to hear from you. What's your favorite memory or personal experience related to this movie? Share your stories in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy as we explore the world of Quo Vadis together. Trust us, you won't want to miss a moment of this journey. A film titled Quo Vadis, released in 1951, has had a significant influence on the history of cinema. The movie, set in ancient Rome, tells a story of love, power, and religious persecution during Emperor Nero's rule. One reason it remains relevant is its exploration of timeless themes, such as the struggle between good and evil, personal desires versus societal norms, and the pursuit of freedom. The film dives into these topics with depth and complexity, making it interesting for audiences of all ages. Additionally, the movie's production values were groundbreaking for its time. Its impressive sets, detailed costumes, and large scale set a new standard for historical epics. The grandeur of ancient Rome was brought to life in a way never seen before in movies. Moreover, Quo Vadis influenced future historical epics, inspiring many filmmakers and setting high standards for the genre. Its success showed that stories set in ancient times could captivate audiences, encouraging other filmmakers to explore similar themes and settings. In conclusion, Quo Vadis remains relevant today because it addresses universal truths and human experiences that stand the test of time. Its impact on cinema, innovative production values, and influence on future filmmakers ensure its place as a beloved classic for years to come. One challenge faced during filming was the reluctance of lions to stay in the arena due to the heat. To solve this, director Mervyn Leroy used costumes filled with raw meat to lure the lions, making them appear to be attacking people. Robert Taylor, initially chosen for the role of Marcus in the 1930s, remained in the cast despite concerns about his age. Taylor had to shave his chest because the studio deemed his chest hair too suggestive for the biblical theme, yet scenes still show it. Overall, the production faced various challenges from animal handling to casting decisions, but managed to create a compelling film despite these obstacles. In the real story, Petronius, known for his indulgent lifestyle, took a week to end his life, letting his wounds bleed and then binding them again. He spent the time entertaining friends, eating, drinking, and sleeping. Director Mervyn Leroy, aged 60, mentioned losing over 22 pounds during the year-long shoot in Italy, despite mainly consuming pasta believed to be fattening. He also noted that around 60,000 extras appeared in the arena scene. The movie Quo Vadis captures these aspects of history and filmmaking with vivid detail and authenticity. Quo Vadis, a famous movie from the early 1950s, was a turning point for MGM, saving the studio from going broke. It not only revived the lead actor's career, who struggled to get good roles after the war, but also won the hearts of people worldwide. The American Film Institute ranks it as one of the top 100 romantic movies ever made. Its lasting influence still inspires filmmakers and audiences today. Its big success at the box office proved it as a timeless masterpiece, showing how powerful storytelling can be in movies. Quo Vadis has left a lasting impression on cinema reaching across generations. This was Endear Me. The story unfolds MGM's pursuit of Sir Peter Ustinov for the role of Emperor Nero, despite initial doubts about his age. Ustinov, who was 30 when the movie premiered, emphasized Nero's historical age, which ultimately helped him secure the part. The film was shot at Cinecita Studios, founded by Mussolini in 1924. In the 1930s, Mussolini's proposed collaboration with Hal Roach raised concerns among Hollywood executives, leading to Roach's departure from MGM to United Artists in 1937. After World War II, Italy provided ample resources and affordable labor for productions like Quo Vadis. 
Hollywood frequently used Cinecita, producing grand-scale films such as Ben-Hur and Cleopatra, which overshadowed Quo Vadis in size. Italian directors like Federico Fellini also took advantage of the studio. Quo Vadis appeared in seven Best Picture Oscar-nominated films, with two winners, including Around the World in 80 Days and Ben-Hur. Director Mervyn Leroy, a Jewish filmmaker, sought the blessing of Pope Pius XII for the shooting script of his film. In a private meeting, the Holy Father placed his hands on the script and offered a prayer in Latin and English, expressing his hope for the film's success. The production of the movie involved an extensive wardrobe, utilizing a staggering 32,000 costumes to bring the historical setting to life. Upon submission to the British Board of Film Censors in 1952, the movie received an X certificate for adults only. This decision disappointed MGM as they had hoped for broader audience access to their costly production. The London premiere occurred three days later, running for 13 weeks at the Carlton and an impressive 69 weeks at the Ritz Cinemas. However, MGM faced challenges as they attempted to reclassify the film for a road show tour at higher prices. Several local authorities, including Bolton, Cardiff, Coventry, Liverpool, Swansea, and Walsall, granted Quo Vadis a local certificate allowing accompanied children to be admitted. In Aberdeen, the magistrates seemingly granted universal permission for the film's showing, indicating suitability for all ages. For the general release at normal prices, starting at Weston Super Mare on July 26, 1953, MGM returned the film to the censor with approximately five minutes removed, primarily scenes depicting lions attacking Christians. Recertified on July 15, 1953, as an A, this abridged version became the one seen by most British audiences. In the novel, Chilo played a significant villainous role, influencing Nero's decision to blame the Christians for the fire. Robert Taylor and Dame Elizabeth Taylor co-starred in other films like Conspirator and Ivanhoe. Sergio Leone's assistant role marked his first collaboration with Americans, though he didn't meet the director or principal actors. In the 1940s, producer Arthur Hornblow was actively developing the property that would later become the movie we know today. A news column from September 7, 1943, mentioned Hornblow considering Lorraine Day for a pivotal role in the film. One notable aspect of the production involved an interesting method to enhance the on-screen presence of lions during arena sequences. The lions were deliberately deprived of food for two weeks before filming, aiming to make them more aggressive and compelling in their performances. The character Emperor Nero, portrayed by Sir Peter Ustinov, emphasizes the concept of creating an experience to find inspiration. In a discussion about his desired conflagration, Nero expresses disappointment at not witnessing a burning city yet. Petronius, played by Leo Gen, responds with a wry remark about carrying art for art's sake too far. Interestingly, the phrase art for art's sake corresponds to the English translation of Ars Gratia Artis, the motto of MGM, the studio responsible for producing and releasing this film. In summary, the movie Quo Vadis, born from Arthur Hornblow's development efforts in the 1940s, features unique production choices such as starving lions to heighten their on-screen intensity. The film also incorporates a clever connection to MGM's motto through dialogue between Emperor Nero and Petronius.